camper that might be for sale after, <laughs> after this week. <laughs> but we're glad Tracy is doing well. 
and glad to have y'all back. Uh, some more prayer requests in the, in the bulletin, which is online. And uh, do we have any other prayer requests? Yeah, I've got two actually. One of them's Darren Jones. He's uh, my sister-in-law's neighbor. He woke up one morning and was feeling good. Mother Bruce was good. So they took him, his son took him all to the hospital. And they kept him for a little while. They had him on the ventilator. And then the next day, they had him introduced to a common part. And he just got faded. daughter's mother-in-law, Linda Lewis, she's got a little station in the law station for us, but she gave us the rest of the word, and yesterday they had something to show me to tell them to read. Is there any other? I talked to Madeline yesterday. You know, Arizona numbers are climbing really, really bad, and none of them can leave the base until September. But out of her 480 people, many of them have COVID on the base. Mm -hmm. I just pray for her. Uh, my, my grandson proposed to his girlfriend yesterday in Disney World. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> our distinguished speaker today <laughs> to come and uh, do our pastoral prayer and lead us in the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we love you. We bow before you today, God, just thanking you so much, Lord. Things seem to look some different around us, God, and Sometimes that leaves us with some feelings we don't really understand, Lord. We don't really like. We don't really, you know, if we're honest, God, we just, <clears throat> sometimes it can be a little scary, God. It can be a little <clears throat> overwhelming. But, Lord, today's our celebration of Fourth of July. We had our fourth yesterday, Lord, and for what this country means to us. And Father God, Lord, where we live and being believers and coming to church, Lord, it, it, it seems to mean a little more, especially does to me, Lord. Uh, thank you so much for just just for who you are in our lives, God. Thank you for, for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us day after day. How we see some things kind of crumble around, Lord, and we just feel like sometimes, God, we might get caught up in some of that, Lord. It might be some times that we had some doubt or some unbelief, Lord. I, there again, I'm putting myself under exam examination, Lord, and I certainly know that I have. But, God, you, you are who you say you are, God. Uh, your word tells us that tells us that we need to call on it, we need to believe in it. Father God, Lord, we just, we want to lift up all of those that are that are sick, God, for, for there is a terrible disease out there that, that's going around, Lord, and we know that it claims the lives of quite a few. And God, for the ones that suffer with it, we just pray for them, God. We just pray that you'll give them whatever need that they, that they, that they need, God. Just give them peace, give them strength, give them healing. Family members around them, caretakers, first responders, law enforcement officers, God, we just we lift them all up to you now, God, right now in this very minute. Yeah. Father God, Lord, we pray that you be with Madeline, uh, being on the base, uh, being in a place, God, where the virus seems to be kind of running rampant, Lord Jesus, we pray that you would be with her. Uh, we pray that you would be with the ones around her, Lord. 
We pray, God, that you can use her as a beacon of light, God. We pray that somehow, some way, she may could lead somebody to you, Lord Jesus. We just pray, Lord, that as we move forward in this time, that we just are able to just trust and put all our faith in you, Lord, for, for your word tells us even kings have authorities over thee. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we just wanna we just wanna close this prayer time with the Lord's prayer. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you don't want to do the tithing off of me, I'll let you mix it. <clears throat> you would take them into your storehouse, that you would gather them all in and use them any way that you would see fit to further your kingdom. We pray a blessing on the gift as well as the giver. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let me ask you a question and you answer me, okay? Do you have the freedom to do anything you want to do? What? No. Only at Nancy's. <laughs> Only at Nancy's. Okay. okay. Do you know why that we don't have a lot of freedom to do what we want to do? We have rules, don't we? Who puts the rules at your house? That's right, Mommy and Daddy do. Do you know why? Us adults have rules also. You know, we can't do everything we want to do. But we can do a little more, and you can too if you grow up, okay? Now, do you know what? Um, did you hear fireworks last night? She heard a few. I heard a lot. Do you know Santa's dog had a heart attack in all these fireworks? <laughs> it scared him to death. It scared her to death. Isn't that something? It was loud, wasn't it? Okay. Yes, some of them did. I'm sure some of them were so scared they ran away. So did it scare you? Me. Yeah, but I didn't even hear them. Oh, you didn't hear them. Oh, God. So, so you wasn't afraid, right? You did? Okay. They was very loud. It was fun. You got to sit on top of your dad's truck. <laughs> on his little green. That's a lot of fun, isn't it? Do you know why we had fireworks last night? Because we were celebrating what? Fourth of July. That's right. The Fourth of July. Do you know what that means? Our nation has a birthday. America has a birthday. You know what day it is? Fourth of July. And that's why we we didn't. Did you have cake? Yes, we did. We had bud of uh, brownies, didn't we? We had what else? Cookout. Hello, Fudd. Yeah, and we also got a grill. We got a new grill. Yeah, and all that. And that's how we celebrated the 4th of July, wasn't it? Well, did you know that because of our freedom, you and all these people are able to come here today? Do you know why we're here today? To worship God. Now, how do you worship God? <clears throat> you pray, being good, and pray, and you go to church, and you know we're so thankful we can do that, aren't we? We're so thankful to do that. Well, did you know that there was a lot of men and women who fought a battle, and it gave us this freedom that we can come to church? Can anybody take that freedom away from us? No, no, no. Why? It's because God gave us that freedom. You're a smart boy. <laughs> yes. And we want to know that before you were three years old. You didn't know it before you was three years old, but when you came forward, you knew it. I you learned it. Well, I did, you know what? When you get three, and I mean, when you get five and six, and you get on up to my age, like 65, I want you to remember that your nanny told you that no matter where you are, you can worship God. You can do it playing. You can do it in your bedroom. You can do it at church. Whatever happens, you can always worship God. You can sing. You, can, you might have to do it in the shower. But you can pray. You can do all that stuff. That would be funny for you to do it in the shower. Okay. Well, do you know we have a little pledge? Do you do a pledge at your school? Sometimes? No? Okay. We have a pledge to our flag right there. See it? Okay, that represents what we, the, the freedom that we have. Where, would you ask all these people to stand up and put their hand over their heart? Okay? Okay, you do it too. Let's face this flag. And I'm going to give you one. 
You put your, that's right, good for <clears> you. <throat> now we're gonna all say the pledge, okay? Ready, go. I, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now they can be seated, can't they? Let's me and you say a little prayer, okay? Is there something you want to pray about? Yeah. Boy, what you want to pray about? You just have to pay here. I mean, I know. Okay, you ready? Our Father, we're so thankful for our children. I, I didn't have to be, be, be asking. That would be great. That, that's right, you can pray. You repeat after me. Say, thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for my parents. And I thank you, Lord, that you love us and that you let us worship. Now forgive us. Bless us. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Bennett. You want this flag to come back? That was so sweet of you. We had a little flag, and she does it every day. That's great. So we get to hold it whenever we can. You can take that one and do it every day. Now, we're ready for you, I think. Unless anybody else has anything to say? Well, good morning again. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Glad to get the opportunity to come. Um, I think, ironically enough, it's been one year to the Sunday since I was here last. I mean, we started going over there the, the first Sunday of uh, July. So it's it's kind of like coming home to come back this morning. Um, you know, I know things have been different for everybody, certainly for y'all. I know y'all been doing mostly online stuff and, uh, you know, get to come out and suffer through the heat and so on and so forth. It's true testament for suffering for the Lord. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here with you. I'm glad to stand in front of you. And I promise I don't have over about 35 pages here. So I can get out of here. <laughs> no, um, like I say, it's, uh, it is good. And I'm, I'm glad to be here. And I, I appreciate Nancy's prayer. Because it, it kind of touched on some stuff. Um, you know, things are a little different. Um, things are <clears throat> seem to be changing. Seem to be changing fast. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of, lot of preaching, um, you know, over the course of the last couple, three months. I mean, we've been able to go to church for about five or six weeks. But it seemed like when a lot of it kind of started, I sought out everything I could find. Um, you know, you kind of turn TV on, read some news, see some news, and think it can't get worse, and then the next day it does, and then the next day it does, and it kind of reaches a point where you just really don't want to see the news no more. So one night I was so worked up about it all. <laughs> I wound up watching a sermon that David Jeremiah had on YouTube. So it kind of brought me back to just always knowing that what we have is, is in this book. When, when the Lord saves you, when he picks you up, he gives you all that you'll need. He'll give you all that you'll ever need. So I took a, uh, I guess let's say a block of scripture from Mark, uh, chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. And it's it's a little bit lengthy, but I'll try to read through it as fast as I can. And then I got some spots I'm going to touch on, so it won't shouldn't take too long, but Starting in verse 21, when Jesus had crossed over by when Jesus had crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was at the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came to him. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her, so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I can just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped. She felt her, 
<coughs> Immediately her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realized that power had gone from him. He turned and around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother. James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all of this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took his child's he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went into the went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her. And I don't know that I can pronounce that, but it means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and walked around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. So as I really look at this section of scripture, it's one that I really like. It's, it's a common story that I've heard several times, but it, 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 it intrigues me a lot because there's, there's an interesting part of it, and for me, it's, it's kind of a two-for-one deal. Everybody seems to kind of want more for less, and this Bible story kind of sums that up for me because we read about Jesus as he's going to, to heal and save this, this synagogue ruler's daughter that he's, he's confronted with another opportunity and as like I said, as we pick up in our text, we read about Jesus and he was crossing over from the other side. And he was met by this man, his name was Jairus. And like I said earlier, he was a synagogue ruler. But first, I, there's a few things I wanted to kind of look back and, and point out about Jairus. He was a man that everyone seemed to know. He was a leader of the local synagogue. And as a result of that, he would have had very strong ties to the Pharisees. And most of whom didn't like Jesus. Um, now, I would think that if you wanted to be on good terms with the Pharisees, that you didn't associate with Jesus. You didn't associate with Jesus' disciples. So to me, that kind of explains in our, in our story here, our text, that this man was desperate. Even though he knew that it may cause problems, even though that it knew he may even put his life in danger, but he knew that if there was any help to be found for his daughter, that he had to seek Jesus. He had done all he could as a parent. No doubt he had used all of the connections in his community, all of his um, means, every, everybody he would have known come in contact with to try to help his daughter and nothing seemed to work. And he knew that if we didn't, that if he didn't find Jesus when he came across, that his daughter was not going to heal. And as I read again in the text, it says, verse 23, and he pleaded earnestly with her. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. Now, like I say, it, it just kind of sums up a lot for me there, you know, what this man did, kind of knowing who he was. And once you understand the time that, that, this, that this was written about, and it, it, it speaks to a lot of parents. I mean, I've heard it said by so many parents over my lifetime, and I've said it myself, you know, what you want to do for your children. And this man, you know, he, he went to Jesus and, and begged him and pleaded with him, and, and Jesus accepted him. And, and we'll come back to that. I want to touch a little bit more on that, but I, like I say, I want to move forward. So as we meet the second character in the story, we're not told a, a lot about her. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't mention anything except that she's very sick and that she has been for some time it says this woman has had some bleeding for 12 years which according to Jewish customs was means this woman was unclean it also meant that anyone came in contact with her before sundown they were also considered unclean so 
as we have kind of just hit the high spots on two of these characters here, I want to kind of point out that 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 both of them are very different. We find two people that come in contact with Jesus in the same day, maybe with even in the same hour, that are very different and come from very different backgrounds. She was a woman and considered a second class citizen. Jarius was of course a man. She was overlooked, ignored, and he was respected. From all indications, she was alone, and as it tells us, he had a family. She's been in a desperate state for 12 years. His daughter is in a desperate state, and she's only 12 years old. So these two people and their family life, or everyday life, so to speak, are, are very different. They couldn't, they're miles apart. But they had one common need, and both of them were in desperate need for Jesus. Now the church is very different. We're made up of a huge variety of people. We have lots of different backgrounds, different struggles, different levels of brokenness. But we all share one thing in common, and that's we all need Jesus. And when we seek his presence, he heals our brokenness. Now we remember who came to Jesus first. It was Jairus who came. And he requested that he heal his daughter, who was no doubt about it. Then Jesus was met with another opportunity, another problem, another need. So the point to that is Jesus could have said at this point, I'm busy. A child is dying. I'm needed over here. I have to go. The disciples could have been very well clear in his path. He could have just been on his way without even acknowledging this morning. In fact, I think after it happened, the disciples were probably even confused at this point. Because I, I look at it from my perspective, from a human perspective, Jesus is on his way to an emergency. He's headed to heal somebody. He's headed to save a dying child. And then he stops in the middle of the crowd, and he says, who touched me? And I'm not sure if I would have responded as Jesus did. I guess I'm more of a one-track minded type of person. If I'm on my way to a child saving emergency, it seems like that's all I've got time to focus on. I might not even recognize the opportunity to do something else. But something that I wanted to learn and take away from this text and to share with you is we're always all involved in God's work. Whoa, baby. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but we're all involved in God's work. There's never any interruption for us to do the will of the Lord. It's always opportunity. So there's many opportunities that we miss, and when I say we, I say myself, I say the church, I say believers in general, because we're always such in a hurry. We're always in a hurry. I've even heard people talk so much about not stuff outside of the church that keeps them so occupied and so tied up, but stuff in the church, choir practice, Bible school, several things. And that's another thing, if anything has taught me during this time, that there's a reflection period here, at least for me, to kind of look back and understand what Jesus has done for us and what he calls us to do. I've always heard what Jesus has done for me, always accepted it, but it's been in the very short time that I've actually looked and examined and put myself under the microscope to know what does he expect from me. And there's a lot of times you just don't measure up. And I know that that's, that's part of the world that we live in. I know that that's our sinful world. But I guess the point I wanted to drive home with that is there's just always opportunities for us to do what Jesus has called us to do, and sometimes we can overlook them by being a little rushed or a little hurt. And <clears throat> Jesus always, or Jesus shows us this woman that was an opportunity to do just that. And now, like I say, for the sake of time, and because it is so hot, but I, I was going to just kind of let the rest of it go as, as far as him going on and, th and that can be another sermon for another time 
because as I read, he goes on and he'll care if his daughter, even though that, that she dies when they come to him to report. But I just really want to concentrate on, on the heart of it here for me is, is this woman in the story. And another truth here is that Jesus looks for her. He made time for her. He seeks her out. And you ask yourself why. And it's because he knows that her brokenness is not just physical. He knows for the past 12 years she would not have been known to others by her, even her name. But the fact that she was sick, the fact that she was broken physically with her condition of having this bleeding. And because of her sickness, she would have been isolated. She would have been probably not associated with, not talked to, um, been very isolated from the society that was the Jewish custom in that day. And like I said, not only has she had this condition for 12 years, but she had spent all she had trying to get well. You know, as we back up and read in Mark here, it talks about she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. And yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. And the, the other two Gospels talks about, or the other two Gospels, two of the other Gospels list this story. And Luke tells us that not only did when she touched Jesus, but that she hid from him and she didn't want to be found. So I guess on a little bit of a side note here, I don't want to chase too many rabbits off to the side, but it, <clears throat> it seems a lot of times that, that when we are broken, and we can relate to that, we have a need and that we might not be able or we just might not want to bring it to Jesus. But the fact of it is, Jesus is in the fixing business. Jesus is in the repair business. There's nothing, there's nothing that's ever broken beyond the repair of Jesus. In verse 30, Verse 32, he says that he looked for her just as he looks for you and me. And he finds her when she drops to her knees right in front of him. But then the best part is what comes next in the words that he spoke to her. And he says, daughter, go in peace. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. And there's so many of us around us that we come in contact with every day that may have some of these broken needs. Some of these people that, that have several things in place in their life. Several ways that we could offer sometimes just the word. Um, sometimes just to share, share Jesus with them. Um, I have tried to do that a little more as of late. Uh, talked to a good friend of mine the other day and as me and him were talking, he, he shared a little story with me. I'll share it with y'all. It's not very long, but keep it brief as I can. But he said that every time he sat down to eat with them, their family, they lived out west in California. And every time he sat down to eat with them, he said he's blessed. I just, you know, ask him if he could bow his head and say he's blessed. Well, they were both Catholic. The man and his wife were both Catholic, and the gentleman passed away. So it wasn't very long. My friend talked to the to the wife and was just he said he gave her a few verses to, to go to in scripture and to find and he said that it wasn't but a week or two later she called him and she said I just wanted you to know something said based on what you had told me and and what I had seen you do just by sitting down and saying your blessing and listening to your words she said I just wanted you to know that I got saved and he said this woman was well up in the years and he said he said that was probably one of the best feelings that I ever have because he said knows if, if you put my, my actions under review he said a lot of times he said I don't reflect the father and he said that's that's things I certainly try to work on and that's obviously true for me and a lot of other people as well but just one just one gesture just one thing that he didn't even know he was doing but just saying his blessing led this woman to be a believer and to be a follower of Jesus Christ and it's just so much more to get healed by Jesus. It's so much more for this lady to, to, to now not be known by her condition, but to be known by her name, but to be known by daughter. 
in the family of Christ, to be known by daughter in the family of God. And that's that's what Jesus has for all of us is to be sons and daughters. So as I wrap all of this up this morning, I would just like to sum up just a few things and leave you with just a few more thoughts. Two people from very different situations, both desperate, both either used all they had by ways of influence or community or doctors or resources or to sum it all up, everything that this world has around and nothing would work. They couldn't find one thing that would heal, not one thing that, that they could find. And that, see, I see that goes on a lot, like I was talking about the news and talking about some of the way that our people around us are living. And folks, I believe there is a time coming where to stand up and to proclaim what this book says will come with a consequence. Mm -hmm. I believe. I, I really don't want to get too off the sidetrack on some stuff there, but it is very near to me and it is very, very near to my heart um, to hear and see some of the things from from these statues that, that, that they want to take down and I'm not talking about politics, and I'm not even talking about the North versus the South. But see, there was some, some headlines and some stories there where they wanted to even take down some signs of Jesus. And because it portrayed a white Jesus. And folks, we're, we're, we're not black or white. We're all God's race. We're who Jesus calls us to be. Daughters, sons, family of Jesus. And that's how we should reflect that. And that's how I want to reflect myself. I just turned 40 years old a couple of years ago. I'm, I'm sorry, a couple of days ago. <laughs> Just don't make it any worse than it already is. Great day. But for the first time, for the first time in my life, I have heard a lot of people talk about stuff, older generations above me from my grandparents, older people that I knew, older people that, that, I, that I respected what they said and tried to listen to what they say. And they talked about times that were in America. And for the first time in my life in 40 years, I can see some of that. I can see some of that coming to be in the land that we love and that we hold dear. And it's even more dear being right now, being the day after the 4th of July, where if you turn on the History Channel in some of these places and see things on Washington, and Jefferson and some of these others that were founding fathers and what they fought and bled and died to do for us. But the main thing is they founded our country on this book. I mean, I, I don't want y'all to miss that. I don't want to leave it out. I mean, I want y'all to, to grab onto that and hang on if there's nothing else that I say that you take away that our nation was founded on Christianity and Christian beliefs. Mm -hmm. And that's where we need to stay. And that's where we need to be moving forward. Now, I know the book of Peter tells us that the devil is out there. And he's roaring like a lion to devour somebody. And I have no doubt that he's running around. I have no doubt that business is good for the devil and his men. Mm -hmm. However, he knows my name. Mm -hmm. And that's just like this lady. When, it, when you hear people, one of the best things I ever heard about somebody, about a pastor going to talk to somebody who was obviously at the end of their, their journey here on earth. And he talked to him, and he said he wanted to pray with him. And, and, and the older gentleman agreed and said he would like that. And when he got done, the pastor said, and he knows your name. And he said there was a great big smile that came up on this old man's face. And he said, I couldn't help but wonder what he was thinking. And he said he shared it with me. He said, not only does, do, does he know my name, do I know his name, but he knows my name. And he said he's going to receive me, and I know where I'm bound. So like I say, to try to pick back up here in, in my conclusion, the like thereof, I guess, um, the one place, like I said, that I have been able to find my peace 
and my healing and my hope is, is in God's word. But it translates down to the feet of Jesus. There's not anybody in here like I was talking about a parent praying for a child that I'm sure at some point in your life had to hit your knee and pray, Lord, please help my son, help my daughter. Sick, broken, whatever. We've all been there. But that's where we're called to be, as at his feet, and to learn what he would have us to do. But most importantly, to thank God that when we can reach out and just touch the hem of his garment, that's all it takes. If we can just barely get a thread on the hem of his garment, that we can be healed. And nothing around beyond is what Jesus, nothing beyond is beyond broken what Jesus is able to heal. But first, we have to seek. We have to find. We have to pray one for another. And most importantly, we have to receive him the Lord of our life. Thank you so much for an opportunity to come. I don't know if y'all have a closing hymn. Um, if, if you do, I'll let y'all do that, and then I'll close this in prayer if that's okay. Everybody should have a copy of America the Beautiful. Let's all stand, please, and then I'll just stand. saved us. We know that you reached down and plucked us out from a sinful world, God. We know that when 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 we touch you, God, if you you don't we don't necessarily have to tell you who it is, God. We know you already know, but you just want us to acknowledge you, God. And that's what we're trying to do today. We're gathered here, Lord. We come with a worshipful spirit, God. We love you. We thank you. We thank you for every opportunity we have, Lord. I pray now that as we depart Lord, that you'll keep us safe. Be with the ones that were not here. Be with the ones on the prayer concern list. God, just touch them in a way, Lord, that only you can, God. We pray that your hand would move across this city, this county, this state, this land, this world, in a way that people could only look and see truly that came from you, God. And we pray that, Lord, in your holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen.